Hi, it's Todd at Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here and today I've got a Schnepper crossbow to show you. So this is a late 17th, early 18th century crossbow, really used for messing about in the garden or on your country estate rather obviously, or for hunting. And it is quite, quite different to the medieval crossbows that we're more used to. So I'll show you one of those and then I'm really going to get into the guts of this thing and show you what this is all about. This is a 15th century soldier's crossbow, fairly plain, fairly ordinary. But whether you were fairly highborn or lowborn, whether you had a really expensive sporting piece or just a piece for culling, killing your enemy, technologically they were basically the same. Trigger system layout, the layout of the bow, the shape of everything was basically the same. Stylistically things change, but actually the operation of it remains the same. And it remained more or less the same as an overall form since the times of the First Crusade. But the trigger system in particular and that's something we're going to look at today with the Schnepper bow. The trigger system in particular doesn't seem to have altered since late Roman times. So you've got the, the nut here and the trigger. And the string comes behind these teeth on the nut. And when you're ready to shoot, you pull the trigger and it rolls forward, spins around and the string slides up the stock. It's a very simple, very effective, very reliable system. But it has some faults. And the main fault about it is that you have, in military bows, often, not always, but often, you have a metal nut. And there is inertia to spinning that around. One way of countering that is that you have an ivory or an antler nut, which is lighter. But still, you need to accelerate that mass around to release the string. It doesn't sound like much, but all these little factors remove power from the bow. So you want to try and avoid that. And the Schnepper bow trigger system is one of the things that does that. The other problem with a trigger system like this is the whole load of this bow goes through the trigger system itself. So you are having to overcome the power within this trigger system. And that's one of the reasons that these trigger bars are long, because sometimes they can be very stiff. Because if they're not very stiff, you end up with a hair trigger, which you don't want either. So it's a good and a reliable system, but it's not delicate and, it, and it's not clever, it's not advanced. Now, if we look at the Schnepper crossbow here, this is absolutely state of the art and it demonstrates your wealth, your status, your money in different ways because it is advanced. And it, you know, to our eyes, it's kind of basic. But actually, there's real technological advancement in this that was not possible 150 years before it. So if we start at the front here, you've got a bolt clip that holds your bolt in place. Around 1500, you know, 1480, nobody had thought of that. So when you wanted to shoot downward, you put your thumb on the back of the bolt and you shoot down. You hold it in place, literally, which is fine. But you know, it's not great if you're riding a horse or if you're hunting in the woods. So that was brilliant little advancement. Then we got the string catch here and the whole trigger system itself. This is a really advanced piece because what it does is it demonstrates money, but it demonstrates money through technological advancement. It demonstrates to your friends that you've got something that they haven't got. It's a rich man's thing. And that's important in the medieval and the Renaissance world. But the other thing is, technically, it's very useful because you're not rotating that nut. You're not having to overcome the inertia. So you're not slowing the string down before it even starts to accelerate. It just pops out. But the other thing is, because a lot of the load of the system is preloaded in this, you can just let that load off with the trigger here. And that means that the trigger can be much lighter. The load is, because it's a multi-part system, the load is not going directly from this string catch to the trigger itself because that just wouldn't be possible with a short trigger like this. So what it's doing is it's allowing you again to have much more precision for hunting, for well, target practice and so forth. This becomes a much better system. So it's advanced and it's expensive, but it's advanced and expensive for a reason. It gives real benefits. And then we come to the site here. Now again, in the old medieval style, you had some kind of sighting ability by having notches on the top of your stock and you've got your little thumb poking up and you can sight between your knuckle and the bolt sticking out the front of the bow. And that gives you some very crude sighting, but that's all they really had. And then around 1500, sights start to come in, whether that's because of guns uh, or possibly because of stone bows, because the sights were standard on stone bows and they started to become very popular around that time. And so suddenly you have a modern weapon you know, archaic version of, but you have all the things that you would expect to have. You have a delicate trigger, one that's easy to use, that is efficient to release the bow, and you have sights and a way of holding your ammunition in place so it doesn't fall out. All of these we just take as a given now, but somebody at some point had to invent them. 
and the snapper bow was pretty well at the beginning of that kind of process. But there's one final advancement that I've not mentioned yet, and that is the trigger guard. That was not there on earlier crossboats. So again, it stops an accidental discharge. You'd take it as an absolute given. It wasn't there before. And the last thing we're going to talk about are the pom-poms here. What are they about? We simply don't know, but it's a pretty common feature on hunting bows of the 17th and 18th century. So it was a popular thing to do. A suggestion that's been made is that the colours are to do with shooting guilds. It may just be a taste. It may be somebody coming along going, oh, I love green and white. I don't know. But half of you are going to be out there screaming at me, going, oh, it's about silencing. It's about taking the reverberation, the vibration out of the stock. I don't think it is. I really don't. I know they look like string silencers that you find on modern um, bows, but I don't think it's about that because I can't notice a difference between the sound. And the other thing about it anyway is that hunting at this time, because the bolts are actually relatively slow, they're only 150, 160, 170 feet per second. So what's that, 45 meters a second, maybe 50 meters a second? They're slow. A deer at 25 meters, 25 yards, has a good chance of jumping out of the way of the bolt. So I don't think that this is about silencing them down. You don't need to silence it because you can't silence it enough so that the deer doesn't hear it. So there's no point in that. So I think it's just decoration and fashion. Taste. Back at the range now with my Schnepper crossbow and my very used workshop t-shirt. We don't sell them like this, we sell them mint, but you can always make your own. So this is the position that the bow would be in after it had last shot. So the uh, string retainer is leaning backward, the bolt clip is forward. So you need to swing the bolt clip out of the way because otherwise it's going to get broken during the loading process. And you see that a lot in museums. You set the trigger, everything's good to go now. So that's now good. Bolt onto the track, clip in position. And shoot. Second shot, set the trigger, swing the bolt clip out of the way. And I find these gaff levers, as these are called, a little bit awkward because, you know, I'm used to goat's foot levers. Those are the ones that I use a lot of. And I'm not used to this, but, you know, practice and I'm sure I'd look slick as anything. At the moment, I probably don't. Under the bolt clip. And away we go. Again, set the trigger, bolt clip out the way. Down and in. Bolt on the rail, clip in. And done. And there we have it. 17th, 18th century Schnepper crossbow. I hope you enjoyed it.